It took a lot of time for the light emitted by several incredibly old galaxies to reach the James Webb Space Telescope. After scientists made more precise estimates, it turned out that the photons had been on the way for over 13 billion years. That's about as long as the entire history of the universe, and only recently have they reached our orbiting observatory. These dramatic results have revealed that the universe started creating stars almost immediately after the Big Bang. But if you look at the images delivered by the James Webb, you won't be overly impressed. Just a handful of smudges, a few glowing spheres, and something resembling a dog bone. And still, the world of astronomy has been left speechless. The telescope's giant mirror has managed to capture the oldest known galaxy in the entire universe. The galaxy got quite a prosaic name, mostly consisting of letters and numbers. Yeah, that's rather catchy. It appeared a mere 320 million years after the Big Bang. In comparison with our home galaxy, this ancient one was tiny. But after its birth, it started vigorously producing new stars at a rate comparable to that of the Milky Way. Interestingly, the Webb telescope has managed to photograph a few other ancient galaxies that had the same characteristics. Based on the snapshots of the baby universe we've got, we can conclude that in those ancient times, the first galaxies and stars were evolving amazingly fast. They also appeared much earlier than most scientists thought. Now, let's talk about the hero of the day, the outstanding telescope itself. The James Webb Space Telescope is a stunning piece of equipment. It's around 100 times more powerful than the Hubble Space Telescope, and the latter has observed places that are 13.4 billion light-years away. The James Webb Telescope is also on the pricey side, to put it mildly. Even though originally the cost of the telescope was estimated to be just $1 to $3.5 billion, the entire process of its construction cost around $10 billion. For comparison, NASA spent $4.7 billion to build and launch the Hubble telescope. And it was another $1.3 billion to fix it in orbit. Even though the James Webb Space Telescope itself is three stories high and the size of a tennis court, its mirrors are the lightest large telescope mirrors of all time. No wonder, during the manufacturing process, they underwent a 92% reduction in weight. The lighter, the cheaper it is to send stuff to space. If you had a chance to look at these mirrors, they would seem to be gold, but they're made of beryllium. This is a steel-gray, lightweight, and brittle metal. A gold coating is still applied to each mirror, but they can't be produced entirely out of gold, since this material needs to expand and contract even with small temperature changes. And that's not what we need to happen to a super-precise piece of equipment. That's why the total amount of gold used in the construction of the James Webb Telescope is less than 2 ounces. That's a golf ball-sized chunk of gold. The gold plates covering the mirror are only 1,000 atoms thick. If we speak about all those incredible feats the telescope is capable of, it can clearly see a US penny from 24 miles away and a football from 340 miles away. Hey, what's the score? JWST comes with significant advantages over any previous mission. For example, its 21-foot mirror is composed of 18 gold-plated hexagonal segments. They gather more than six times as much light as the Hubble Space Telescope's almost 8-foot mirror. It means that James Webb can record light from all kinds of space objects six times faster than its predecessor. The telescope's sensitivity to infrared light is also astonishing, which is remarkable since it can see different things than optical telescopes. You can say it's a real game-changer. The James Webb can observe wavelengths from 0.6 to 28.5 micrometers, from the red end of the visible spectrum to the mid-infrared. As for Hubble's optics, most of the telescope's sensitivity is centered on visible light. It might sound surprising, but in its intended infrared domain, the Webb telescope isn't likely to resolve finer details than Hubble can detect in optical light. The thing is that although resolution increases with the mirror size, it also diminishes with wavelength. James Webb's telescope side cools itself down because, otherwise, it might get damaged or even burn. Normally, its temperature doesn't rise higher than minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold enough to make hydrogen liquid. 
an enormous five-layer sunshield surrounds the telescope and reflects as much sunlight as possible, letting the telescope stay cool. The telescope was launched near the equator because Earth spins a bit faster there, and this gave the rocket some extra push. When the James Webb Space Telescope runs out of fuel, it'll just keep orbiting the Sun. On the other hand, even though the telescope wasn't designed to be serviced or upgraded, it might potentially be refueled with the help of robots in the future. This might extend its lifespan. Anyway, here are the reasons why we can say this telescope has changed astronomy. For one thing, we might finally see dark matter. Around 84% of matter in the universe doesn't emit or absorb light. Astronomers call this stuff, which can neither be seen directly nor detected by indirect means, dark matter. It affects visible matter, radiation, and the very structure of the universe. Dark matter is like some binding agent of our universe, and we're still not sure whether it exists. And now, thanks to the James Webb Telescope, scientists might finally have a way to seek dark matter. It's a huge development that is likely to change the way we observe the known as well as unknown universe. Even though astronomers haven't seen dark matter directly yet, they have been able to trace the distribution of this mysterious universal compound, all thanks to James Webb's powerful instruments. Another reason the new space telescope is so cool is that it helps us learn more about star formation. This process has always been a foundational part of astronomical studies. But even though Hubble has provided us with some iconic images and observations, there are still many unanswered questions about how stars form and go out. But astronomers are sure that James Webb will fill in the blanks. All because this telescope can peer further and deeper into the universe than any other telescope that has ever existed. Its location and cutting-edge equipment allow it to gaze through gases and dust surrounding early galaxies and stars. It will let us get a better look at star formation. It's also obvious that Webb's discoveries are bound to change the way we think of the early universe. For example, recently, the telescope has revealed several large galaxies that scientists believe existed not long after the Big Bang. They aren't supposed to be there, and no one expected to find them. And still, the James Webb Space Telescope has spotted them. These six galaxies, as massive as our home Milky Way, are full of mature red stars. Astronomers have analyzed the light coming from them and estimated their age 5 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. The most bizarre thing about these galaxies is their tremendous size and the age of the stars inhabiting them. This information doesn't coincide with the existing ideas about what the universe looked like and how it evolved in its early years. Plus, it doesn't match the earlier observations made by Hubble. Astronomers hope that one day, James Webb will help us find new exoplanets and even detect water there. For a long time, astronomers have been discovering planets orbiting stars outside the solar system by monitoring slight dips in stars' light. Such dips happen when planets pass in front of them, and reading unique signatures in the light can tell us about planets' chemical composition. The strongest and most readable signatures happen within the infrared spectrum. Have you just thought of James Webb's state-of-the-art infrared instruments too? They can help scientists spot new planets and even identify the presence of water there. Jupiter has 79 known moons, and the four biggest of them that are particularly interesting are Galilean moons. They were named after Galileo Galilei. He discovered them in the 17th century. They have something in common, but at the same time are all very different. Europa is the smallest of the Galilean moons with a diameter of 1,860 miles. It orbits Jupiter every 3.5 days. The first images we got from there were taken in the 1970s. Its surface mostly consists of water ice. Europa has long fractures, often around a mile wide, that can extend for thousands of miles across its surface. They were probably formed as the crust pulled apart from tidal forces on the mysterious ocean beneath the surface. In 2012, scientists discovered water vapor plumes erupting close to its south pole, rising up to 125 miles. These plumes can help us find what's inside Europa, 
without having to land there. Scientists think there could be a magnificent ocean hidden 10 to 15 miles beneath the solid surface. That ocean could be 40 to 100 miles deep. Even though it's just one quarter of Earth's diameter, it contains twice as much water as all of our oceans together. This ocean is a potential environment for some forms of life. Scientists believe the entire ice crust is floating on that ocean. It probably makes a full rotation around Europa once every 12,000 years. In the image the Galileo spacecraft took, you can see small dark brown spots. They're six miles across and formed as the hot, less dense material was getting to the surface. It either pushed the crust or broke through it altogether. The surface of Europa consists of so-called chaos terrains. They're rough areas surrounded by a smoother surface. Its equator could be covered in ice spikes called penitentes that can go up to 50 feet high. We have them on Earth, too, especially in dry areas at high altitudes. But none of them are as big as those on Europa. Our moon has over 5,000 big craters with a diameter of more than 15 miles. Europa's surface lacks impact craters and doesn't look like it's more than 50 million years old. This means the surface of Europa is changing and reforming all the time. This moon is icy and is one of the smoothest of any solid space objects in our solar system. Because of it, it's five times brighter than our moon. Europa is under a constant blast of radiation coming from Jupiter. It's so strong, we wouldn't last even a day there. Europa is five times further away from the center of our solar system than Earth. That means it barely gets any heat coming from the sun, so it can remain frozen since the average temperature is negative 250 degrees Fahrenheit at the equator and around negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit at the poles. About 40 years ago, the Voyager 1 spacecraft came close to the rocky moon Io and discovered that it's a volcanic champion of our solar system. Io is Jupiter's fifth innermost moon, 4.5 billion years old, nearly the same age as Jupiter itself. It's similar in size to our moon and even has a similar density and amount of gravity. Many moons in our solar system consist of silicates and water ice, but Io is made of iron and silicate rock. You'd be able to see some beautiful auroras on Io. As this moon rotates around Jupiter, auroras change brightness all the time, but they're always there. Io is relatively close to Jupiter, almost 260,000 miles above its cloud tops. If you could come to Io and take a look at Jupiter from there, it would appear almost 40 times bigger in the sky than our moon. Stargazing there would be amazing! Io needs 42 and a half hours to orbit Jupiter. Our moon needs almost a month. At some points, Io's tidal bulge can go up to 330 feet. It's similar to what we have on Earth. The gravity of our moon causes ocean tides. Io doesn't have an ocean, but the ground itself moves and goes up and down. It's like an elevator taking you to the bottom and then the top of a building with 30 stories. The gravity of Jupiter and its other big moons affect Io, so the solid ground tides on its surface are over five times as high as the highest ocean tides on our planet. All this makes Io so hot on the inside that some of the inner materials melt, boil, and try to escape in any way possible. Eventually, it creates a hole in the ground, which then turns into a volcano. Io is the most active body in our solar system when it comes to volcanoes. Io has more than 400 of those, with 150 of them erupting all the time. Some of them shoot their hot gas plumes 200 miles into space. It would be difficult to walk there because we're talking about a pretty intense world of floodplains of liquid rock, huge lava flows, multiple lava lakes, and giant collapsing mountains. Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system we know of, also has the biggest water ocean. It's 26% greater than Mercury when it comes to volume, but it's less dense. This giant moon has a thick crust of water ice 90 miles deep. There might be a huge ocean of liquid water underneath. It extends 60 miles deep, 
which is about 10 times deeper than the deepest point in the Earth's ocean. The Voyager spacecraft also detected polar caps made of water frost there. Ganymede is half rock, half water, including tiny amounts of metals and ice. Its atmosphere is very thin and doesn't contain oxygen. This ocean most likely doesn't contain life. The Earth is a great example of how certain microbes and creatures can survive deep down without sunlight. But the ocean of Ganymede is so deep and the pressure is so strong that the water at the bottom is probably compressed back into ice. Certain forms of life in the deepest areas of our ocean survive thanks to geothermal vents that eject minerals. Since there's likely thick ice between the ocean and the core, this isn't the case with Ganymede. But the ocean there is salty, with multiple layers divided by icy sheets. If there's any chance of life, it could be in the part where the rocky core is in contact with the most internal icy layer. Beneath all that water and ice, Ganymede is the only moon in the entire solar system with a magnetic field. It's possible because this moon has a liquid core. Ganymede circles Jupiter approximately once every seven days. Its orbit is so eccentric that at some points, it's pretty close to Jupiter. Ganymede, Io, and Europa have gravitational forces that affect each other. In the time Ganymede orbits Jupiter once, Europa makes two orbits, and Io makes a full circle four times. One third of Ganymede's surface contains big dark regions, while the other two thirds are lighter. Dark areas are older and contain more craters. Lighter areas have long ridges and grooves about 2,300 feet high and thousands of miles long. Callisto, the third biggest moon in the solar system, 3,000 miles in diameter, needs 17 Earth days to orbit Jupiter. Its atmosphere is very thin. There are many impact craters, but its ancient crust has basically been the same for more than 4 billion years. When a planet is geologically active, like the Earth, some things can erase most of the evidence from past impacts. Water, volcanoes, tectonic plate movements, human activity, and weather. All this changes the surface. Callisto has experienced none of those. Scientists think this moon used to be an ocean world that eventually froze over. It was hit by meteors from time to time, but mainly remained untouched. And yet, it still has some pretty impressive craters, like Valhalla. The biggest multi-ring crater in our solar system, that's 2,500 miles in diameter. Major craters on Callisto contain more rings than those on other celestial bodies. Whatever hit the moon was big enough to have punctured the thin crust, causing water to spread on the surface. And under this thin crust, there could be either salty ocean or soft ice. The Galileo space probe detected that Jupiter's magnetic field couldn't penetrate through this moon, likely because of a layer at least six miles thick. That's why it's hard to explore Callisto. Moons like Europa have vents that eject water from the subsurface oceans. But to explore Callisto and discover more about its past, we'd have to use the old school way, digging through the crust. If we wanted to explore the outer parts of our solar system, Callisto would be a great spot because Jupiter's radiation doesn't reach it. So we'd be safer there than on some other inner moons. Hundreds of diplomatic spaceships take off from Earth and head into space. When they reach their destination, they're met by hundreds of alien ships. This is humanity's first contact with an extraterrestrial civilization. People managed to detect them not so long ago in a star system very close to our home. It's Proxima Centauri. This red dwarf star is the closest to our solar system. It's seven times smaller than our sun, which makes it only 50% bigger than Jupiter. Proxima Centauri is also eight times as light as the sun. This star system is 4.2 light years away. That's how long it takes a photon of light to travel from this star to Earth. By comparison, it only takes eight minutes for sunlight to reach our planet. If you decided to travel to Proxima Centauri, it would take you about 73,000 years to fly there in a conventional rocket. That's longer than our intelligent civilization has even existed. But it's not the star itself that interests us, it's the planet orbiting it. 
That's Proxima Centauri b. It's 17% bigger than Earth and about 10% heavier. It orbits its star at a distance of 4.5 million miles. By comparison, Earth is 93 million miles away from the Sun. That's 20 times farther. But the host star, Proxima Centauri, is a red dwarf. It doesn't emit as much light and heat as our Sun. So the planet Proxima Centauri b is right in the habitable zone of the star. It's located at such a perfect distance from its mother star that the planet neither gets too hot nor turns into a block of ice. In other words, the temperature there makes it possible for water to exist in its liquid state. This means that Proxima Centauri b could host life. But further observations of the planet make it doubtful. The host star is very unstable. Its brightness changes too frequently. In 2017, astronomers witnessed a catastrophic flash. The star increased its brightness by 1,000 times for 10 seconds. Before that, there was another weaker flash. The planet received an enormous amount of radiation. If there had been life there, that flare would have wiped it out completely. Overall, Proxima Centauri b receives about 400 times more X-rays than Earth. Complex living organisms cannot live under such conditions. Scientists say that even if there was an atmosphere and an ocean on Proxima Centauri b, this constant radiation would simply blow them off the planet. Proxima Centauri b is so close to its host star that it's gravitationally locked to it. This means that the planet is always turned to the star with only one side, just like the moon is turned toward Earth. That means that only one side of the planet receives this awful amount of radiation. And some experts speculate that an intelligent civilization might live on the night side of the planet. And it could be this civilization that sent us the strange signal that astronomers caught in 2019. Scientists described it as, quote, a bright long duration optical flare, accompanied by a series of intense coherent radio bursts. This radio signal was observed for 30 days by one of the radio telescopes on Earth. Scientists thought the signal was artificial and could have been sent by an extraterrestrial civilization. Presumably, the signal came from Proxima Centauri b, or one of the moons that might be in that star system. But further observations failed to detect the signal. Now, the main theory claims that this radio signal is just some kind of interference from some technology on Earth. But what if it was really sent by a civilization living on the dark side of Proxima Centauri b? Well, we may soon find out for sure. People are launching a brand new telescope into space. It's the James Webb Space Telescope. It's scheduled to be launched at the end of 2021. A booster rocket will take off from Earth and reach orbit. Then, it'll deliver the telescope to a specific point between our planet and the Sun, where their gravitational forces are roughly equal. Plus, there's no light pollution in space, unlike on Earth's surface. There are also no clouds or other weather conditions that might interfere with the telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope will replace the Hubble Telescope, which has been operating in space since 1990. The new telescope costs $9.8 billion. And here's why. It'll use a mirror as wide as a boxing ring. This will allow the telescope to see very far into space. So far, in fact, that the light from some events happening there won't have reached Earth yet. This means we will literally be able to look back in time. The James Webb Space Telescope will see the universe almost immediately after the Big Bang. We'll see how the first stars and galaxies were born, and how the universe turned into what we observe today. But also, this telescope can be used to examine Proxima Centauri b. Astronomers will be looking for artificial light there, like the LED lights we have on Earth. If Proxima Centauri b really hosts life on its night side, then the locals must have learned to transfer heat and light from the day side of the planet, and they would have to use artificial light to support life on their side. The James Webb Space Telescope is powerful enough to distinguish the light waves emitted by the star from those that might be created by someone on the dark side of the planet. And if we do detect some artificial light, we'll have the first ever confirmation that an intelligent civilization might exist outside our solar system. But there's always room for error in calculations and data interpretation. The only way to establish the truth once and for all is to send a space probe to Proxima Centauri. Then we can get real pictures of the planet. The main problem is distance. Although Proxima Centauri is the closest to the Earth's star system, 
it still takes tens of thousands of years to get there. After all, the Voyager 1 space probe needed about 44 years just to leave the solar system. And that's just a small step compared to the actual distance to the nearest star. So we need other methods of travel, and they have to be much faster. Some scientists want to send microprobes to Proxima Centauri b. They won't be any heavier than a sewing needle. A launch vehicle will deploy about a thousand of these probes into orbit. Then they will unfold a space sail. This is an ultralight material that will use the power of light to create thrust. When the sail is deployed, we'll focus a powerful laser beam onto it. This will accelerate the probes to about 20% of the speed of light. This will be an absolute speed record by our standards, but it'll still take about 21 years for these probes to reach their destination. And we'll have to wait for about four more years just to get the first signal from them. The Proxima Centauri star system isn't the only potential world to host life. And one of the tasks of the James Webb Space Telescope is to look out for other worlds. The telescope's powerful instruments will allow it to find relatively cold planets where temperatures are close to those on Earth. We'll be able to study in detail around two dozen nearby star systems, and we'll be able to detect not only planets themselves, but also their moons. Scientists expect a boom in the discovery of exoplanets. From the start of the telescope in 2022, we'll constantly be detecting new worlds and learning more about those already discovered. The James Webb Space Telescope will allow us to better study our own solar system, Jupiter's moon Europa, for example. Scientists believe there might be water there. Although Europa looks like a block of ice, the moon's gravitational interaction with Jupiter heats its core. That likely makes the ice deep below the surface melt. So there's likely to be an ocean under the ice crust. Similar conditions could exist on Enceladus, Saturn's moon. This moon is geologically active. There are geysers that burst out of the cracks on the moon's surface. The James Webb Space Telescope's infrared instruments will be able to explore Europa and Enceladus in search of biosignatures. Those are the traces of life activity of living organisms or bacteria. This telescope is scheduled to operate for about six years. But in the future, we'll launch an even bigger one. It's called Louvoir, which stands for the Large UV Optical Infrared Surveyor. Its mirror will be twice the size of that of the James Webb Space Telescope and almost seven times the size of the Hubble's. The telescope is scheduled to be launched in 2039. We'll get it into orbit with the help of a super heavy rocket. Then we'll have to deliver the telescope to its destination, one million miles away from Earth. And then it'll begin its observations. We could learn to travel faster than the speed of light by that time. Then, if we find a potentially habitable planet with the help of the telescope, we can send a space probe or even a team of explorers there. In this case, a diplomatic meeting with an extraterrestrial civilization might become a reality. The James Webb Telescope, or JWST, is like the ultimate intergalactic paparazzi. It takes pictures of some of the most famous celebrities in the universe. Stars, galaxies, exoplanets, you name it. The James Webb Space Telescope will snap a photo. So if you're a fan of cosmic celebrities, let's take a look at some of these best star-studded photos. The Carina Nebula. The image of the nebula with the beautiful name Carina was published on July 12th. JWST captured a beautiful view of the nebula, located about 7,500 light years from Earth. Nicknamed the Cosmic Cliffs, it is, in fact, a hotbed of young stars, some of which are several times larger than our Sun. The Carina Nebula is a celestial spectacle located in the southern constellation Carina. It's really huge, approximately 260 light years across. Massive stars within this nebula are so bright and hot that they create a glowing cloud of gas and dust around them. The Carina Nebula also contains swirling clouds of gas and dust where new stars are being born. The gas collapses under its own weight, becomes hotter and denser, and all this eventually leads to the creation of new stars. However, the Carina Nebula isn't just some peaceful place of star formation. It's the site of some of the most destructive events in the universe, which create massive shockwaves that obliterate everything in their path. 
very chaotic and cool. The Stefan's Quintet This photo was also posted on July 12th. Stefan's Quintet is a visual group of five galaxies located at a huge distance from us, about 290 million light years in the constellation of Pegasus. It's like a cosmic family reunion. All these galaxies are related to each other and interact with each other in some interesting ways. They're pulling and tugging on each other with their gravity, constantly exchanging gas and dust. This interaction is causing some of the galaxies to collide and merge, which can create all sorts of cool effects, like bursts of star formation and supernovae. Thanks to JWST, we were able to see shockwaves, tidal tails, and other amazing details about these galaxies. Their interactions create a stunning sight that we can see in this photo. Jupiter and here's our old giant friend. This image was published by NASA on August 22nd. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, and it's known for its many moons and its beautiful swirling clouds. But it also has a system of rings, just like Saturn, which are made up of tiny particles of dust that orbit the planet. These rings are much smaller and less visible than Saturn's, but they're still pretty neat. Jupiter also has auroras, which are colorful light displays that occur in the planet's atmosphere. They're caused by charged particles from the solar wind interacting with Jupiter's magnetic field. Just like on Earth, they can be seen near the poles of the planet. But these auroras are much brighter and more intense than ours. We can even see this crazy light show from space. And now, we were finally able to capture this dazzling sight. JWST's photo shows the auroras of Jupiter, its rings, and even two moons, Amalthea and Adrastea. It's amazing how bright and clear they are on this photo. The Cartwheel Galaxy NASA released this image on August 2nd. This photo shows us the Cartwheel Galaxy and its companions. The Cartwheel Galaxy gets its name from its shape. It kind of looks like a cartwheel, doesn't it? This is a giant swirling mass of stars, gas, and dust, which is located in the depths of space. It's shaped like a pinwheel with long spiral arms. These arms are held together by the gravity of the central region, which is home to a supermassive black hole. But the Cartwheel Galaxy is a bit different from its spiral relatives. It has formed when a smaller galaxy collided with a larger one creating a shockwave that rippled through the gas and dust. We'll definitely have to visit this galaxy someday. It's sure to be a wild ride. Spiral Galaxy M74 And here comes another spiral galaxy. NASA released this image on July 22nd. JWST had to peer through thick layers of dust and gas to see this beautiful star cluster. M74 belongs to a special class of spiral galaxies known as the Grand Design Galaxy. This means that its spiral arms are noticeable and clearly outlined. All sorts of amazing things are happening inside of spiral galaxies. Supernovas, stars being born in clouds of gas and dust, and many other cosmic wonders. The glowing gas and dust the bright stars and the swirling patterns of the spiral arms make them some of the most striking objects in the universe. Well, we can clearly see it on the example of M74. The Tarantula Nebula This image of the nebula with a creepy name Tarantula was published on September 6th. The photo covers as much as 340 light years across. This is a huge distance! Thanks to this image, astronomers have discovered new young stars that were previously shrouded in dust. The Tarantula Nebula is located 160,000 light years away from us, in the Large Magellanic Cloud. It's the largest and brightest star forming region in the local group, the galaxies nearest our Milky Way. It's named after its shape, which looks like a bit like the legs of a big tarantula. It's a vast region of space, about 1,000 light years across, and it's home to some of the most massive and luminous stars in the universe. 
One of the reasons why the Tarantula Nebula is interesting to scientists is its composition. Its composition is close to the region of stars of the cosmic noon. The so-called state of our universe when it was only a few billion years old. At that time, star formation was at its peak. Thanks to the Webb Telescope, we can study this galaxy better and find out what our universe was like at its peak. Neptune's Rings This photo was published on September 21, 2022. In this photo, we can even see six small moons next to the planet, with Triton shining brightly in the upper left corner. You didn't think it was the sun, did you? And yep, Neptune has rings too. They're like the ultimate cosmic accessory. They add a touch of glamour and style to the planet. But unlike some earthly bling, these rings are made of small particles of dust rather than diamonds and gold. There are five known rings around Neptune. The Gaul, Le Verrier, La Celle, Arago, and Adam's rings. Scientists think that these are relatively young, much younger than our solar system and much younger than, for example, Uranus's rings. They were probably created when one of Neptune's inner moons got too close to the planet and was torn apart by gravity. We haven't seen Neptune's ring so brightly since Voyager 2 flew past it back in 1989. So this is a great opportunity to take a closer look at these rings. The Pillars of Creation This photo was published on October 19th. The Pillars of Creation became famous thanks to the Hubble telescope. But this photo is very lush and much more detailed. These columns, located in the Eagle Nebula, are about five light years tall, which is really, really long. And they look like some majestic rock formations, only much more transparent. Just like a typical Hollywood movie set, they're full of action and special effects. They're home to some of the most dramatic processes in the universe. The gas and dust are collapsing under their own gravity, forming clumps that will eventually become stars. The place is full of intense radiation, jets of high-energy particles, and supernovae. It's like a cosmic version of Survivor. And if this wasn't creepy enough, here's another photo published by NASA on October 19th. They shared it right before Halloween. Here, the pillars resemble an eerie hand reaching for something. Brr. Anyway, all these photos give us a truly awe-inspiring sight. They remind us of the incredible complexity of the universe and the amazing things that are happening even in the darkest and most remote corners of the cosmos. Let's hope that the James Webb Telescope will continue to amaze us in the future. Wow, the James Webb Telescope has been fully deployed. If you're interested in astronomy or space, you've got to be excited about the James Webb Space Telescope. Here's why. For starters, it's huge. How huge? The primary mirror of the JWST is over 21 feet wide. The Hubble Space Telescope, the previous largest eye in space, has a mirror of about 7 feet 10 and a half inches. By comparison, if you place the two telescopes side by side, it'd be like putting a horse next to an elephant. And elephants are enormous. There's a perfect reason why the web, as it's affectionately called, is massive. It has to be huge, because it's not an optical telescope in the traditional sense that most telescopes are. The JWST is an infrared telescope. It sees heat. Infrared light has a longer wavelength than visible light, so it needs a larger mirror to focus that light. So what do we have here with the James Webb Space Telescope? We have two never-before things going on. We have incredible technology and incredible science missions. Both the missions and the technology are out of this world cutting edge. The web is a classic example of engineering in the service of science. Because of its greater light gathering power, the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to take images of things that we were never able to see before, but have always wanted to see. Things like exoplanets and the first galaxies in the universe and stars and planets forming inside nebulae and you can bet that there will be plenty of surprises, too. The James Webb Space Telescope has several technological tricks up its sleeve, which promise to provide its greatest scientific discoveries. The Webb has a coronagraph, and a very special coronagraph at that. 
the coronagraph is the tool that will allow the first real pictures of exoplanets. The coronagraph blocks out the bright pinpoint light of stars, which we already know have planets orbiting around them. Without the coronagraph, the starlight would make things too bright to see these planets, because planets are hundreds of thousands of times dimmer than the star. But with the coronagraph blocking the starlight, the exoplanets come into view, and the JWST coronagraph can block the light from up to 100 stars at once. We can expect a swarm of exoplanets. This brings us to the next high-tech gadget the JWST has up its sleeve, a no-slit spectrograph. Usually, an ordinary spectrograph will have a slit to allow a sliver of light to enter and be diffracted. Diffraction is the scattering of light to reveal the spectrum of the light's component wavelengths. But the James Webb Space Telescope's work is so sensitive that a sliver of light would overwhelm the optics. So a no-slit spectrograph was installed. The starlight gathered from the big mirror is sent into a fiber optic cable to send only a single spot of light into the spectroscope. And that's where the grism takes over. Sir Isaac Newton used a prism to discover the spectrum of sunlight, Roy G. Biv, as you may recall. But the web uses a grism. That's a compound word, like smog, which is smoke and fog. A grism is a graded prism. That means it has itsy bitsy, teeny tiny grooves that diffract the spot of light the big mirror sends down the fiber optic cable and into the spectrograph. The science of reading a spectrum of light is called spectroscopy. By analyzing the spectra of light from the exoplanets, the JWST will determine what gases are in the planet's atmospheres, as well as their density and even their temperature. It's an incredible advance in our knowledge. We'll be able to tell if a planet has oxygen or nitrogen or methane and other gases that may or may not indicate that the planet is habitable. Another Earth, perhaps. Presently, the JWST is parked in its permanent location. Unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, which orbits the Earth, the James Webb Space Telescope orbits the Sun. It orbits the Sun at one of the gravitational balance points between the Earth-Sun system. It just stays there without having to use much or any fuel to hold its position. So as the Earth orbits the Sun, the James Webb remains parked at a spot that is also orbiting the Sun. There are five gravitational balance points between the Earth and Sun. They are called Lagrange points after their discoverer, Joseph Louis Lagrange, in the 18th century. The web is parked at L2, the second of the five Lagrange points, which lies 932,000 miles out into space, way beyond the moon. All this to observe a spot of infrared light. But first, the engineers must get, or acquire, that spot of light. To get a spot of infrared light, the 18 hexagonal mirrors had to be unfolded from their position inside the Ariane rocket that sent the web into space. Once the mirrors have unfolded, their positions must be adjusted to microscopic level accuracy so that all 18 mirrors produce a single image. Several tiny motors are attached to each mirror segment to make these adjustments. These motors, which must be activated individually, will gradually pull the honeycomb-like mirror segments into alignment. It's a critical part of the mission and takes months to complete. To align the mirrors to produce a single spot of light, the James Webb Space Telescope can't be jiggling around. The telescope must be kept absolutely motionless, and that requires two other cutting-edge technologies, the sun shield and the cryocooler. In space, direct sunlight is very hot, and shadow is very cold. Therefore, the James Webb Space Telescope brought along its own high-tech sun shield. It's huge, too, as big as a tennis court huge. Comprised of five individual layers of Kapton film, only a millimeter thick, each layer of the sunshield has to be remotely deployed individually using a system of eight motors and 139 actuators with thousands of parts. The purpose of the sunshield is to help the JWST stay cold. The colder, the better. And colder is what the cryocooler is for. Temperature can be measured three different ways, in degrees Fahrenheit, where water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212, in degrees Celsius, where water freezes at zero degrees and boils at 100 degrees. But neither of these thermometers have a starting point. So Lord Kelvin, in the 19th century, devised a third temperature scale, the Kelvin scale, which starts at absolute zero, the coldest temperature possible. 
the onboard cryo cooler will cool the JWST to just seven degrees Kelvin, seven degrees above absolute zero. At this temperature, virtually all heat from motors is removed and the telescope will be able to focus the light to a point without any noise, basically any motion interfering with the quality of the image. Finally, after all this incredible technology functions remotely as planned, we are almost ready to observe the infrared images from the giant multi-segmented mirror of the James Webb Space Telescope. Almost ready. A telescope can collect all the light it wants, but in the end, it must also be able to detect what it's collected. If the light is not detected, it's not truly observed. Enter the piece de resistance, the infrared detectors. The web has 15 of them. The specially fabricated semiconductor material produces a slight electrical charge when struck by a photon of infrared light. The web's infrared detectors can produce a million pixel high def image. A few of the detectors can produce a four million pixel image. They must be durable enough to last 10 to 20 years without warping or corrupting, all while working at seven degrees above absolute zero. In themselves, the infrared detectors on the JWST are an engineering marvel. But what are they gonna take pictures of? Ah, the missions of the JWST. Well, they're cutting edge too. 70 of the first 280 target observations are exoplanets. Is there another Earth? Which exoplanets seem habitable? The Webb telescope will provide detailed spectroscopic analysis of the atmospheres of thousands of known exoplanets. For the first time, we will see images of exoplanets as they appear in infrared light. Cosmology, the study of the universe, is perhaps the primary mission for the web. Galaxies receding away so fast that their light is stretched into the infrared will be a prime target for observation. Hundreds of hours of observations are necessary to collect the faint infrared light from these first galaxies formed after the Big Bang. The JWST will give us a picture of what the infant universe looked like. Astronomers will learn new information about the dark energy that is driving the expansion of the universe and what role, if any, black holes play in the formation of galaxies. Star formation in the Milky Way and nearby galaxies is also part of the mission of the James Webb. By imaging hundreds of solar systems forming around newborn stars, astronomers will establish a definite history of solar system development. Now fact will replace theory and a big step forward will be taken in our understanding of space. The James Webb Space Telescope is a bold endeavor that will mark an epoch time in scientific history.